Good morning, people. Today is one of those days where you've got to become the sunshine. Because we ain't got no sunshine this morning. With sunshine in the sense of daylight, but not seeing the sun. Maybe something will happen. A little while ago, there was a little bit of nice color, but I wasn't ready to live stream, so here we go now. And I'm actually wearing an umbrella. because it was drizzling a few minutes ago. And because of that, I want to go and see the map because the map has, it's the colors of the map could stand out much better when it's wet. It's also a dangerous thing when, when um, the first rains come, although we had some a while ago, but not much, like it's very light. When the first heavy rains come, or maybe we did. We actually did have a couple of good showers. Um, there's a lot of dust since last April when we haven't had rain since April. So a lot of dust accumulates on the roads and it becomes very slippy, slippery. And so drivers have to be careful that they don't slide when they put on their brakes. But you're probably not driving here if you're watching the live stream, so it's not relevant for you and if you're living in Ireland it's never a problem because there's hardly a day without rain or a week without rain and so look at how the colors stand out isn't that amazing you know every circumstance of every circumstance of life has an advantage sometimes it has disadvantages for our expectations but every every circumstance of life has advantage look at the way the colors stand out isn't that beautiful when it's all very dry, you can, well, you can see the big names easily. But now every name stands out so clearly. And all the little features of the decoration. Beit Shean was the capital of the Decapolis. You know this. Decapolis, the ten cities, which is, incorporates most of Jordan today, including the capital of Jordan, Amman, but also Hippos just across the, the Sea of Galilee here, you have Hippos, and the volunteers were there the other day. It's a very fascinating little place, and it's up on top of a hill, got really hit by an earthquake and had lots of churches in it at that point, I think in the 700s. And they're continuing to excavate and now it's being developed into a very beautiful national park. I haven't been there, I haven't seen those developments. I wasn't there for a couple of years, I think. Phoenicia. Galilee, you probably heard of that. And then the Romans called the Mediterranean Mare Nostra. Mare Nostrum, it's neuter, Mare Nostrum, our sea. And Mediterranean means in the middle of the lands. So people see it in their times from different, even the color here of the blue, the way it stands out. So beautiful. I'm learning Arabic every day for the last couple of years. It's very slow going people. They say the first 17 years are the hardest or the first 15 years, that's what a priest told me when I came here. But I haven't been doing it for much more than that systematically. And I don't know why I made that comment right now. Oh, uh, there's one of the lines I was learning the other day. It says, the sea in my city is blue and pretty. Bahar is the word in Arabic for a sea. And Izrach is blue. And Jamil is pretty. Bahar fi Medinati Ezraq wa Jamil. My pronunciation might be a little affected by Irish accent, so forgive me. The sea in my city is blue and pretty. Even rhymes in English. So I'm going to show you something else that we saw for the first time yesterday because of one of our volunteers 
brought us a picture to br breakfast and said, see what I found. I don't know if you want to guess what it is. Look at all the stuff that's coming for the improvement of Magdala and some things for construction. Running a place like this has a lot of different aspects to it. Thanks be to God, I'm not in charge of administration and those kind of things. That's not my kettle of fish. I think live streaming is the best. Sharing this treasure with you. But actually the best of all is when there are pilgrims here encountering people. Isn't that beautiful? So I hope I find what I was told or I saw in the picture is here. And I don't know if you believe it. If you, if you, you, sh you should believe it really, because I told you so before. We have an oak tree here. Well, it seems to be doing pretty nicely. I didn't focus on it for a while. So here's our oak tree. And this good volunteer, she showed us a picture of an acorn. And guess what? Look what's here. Actually two of them, two for the price of one. Actually, do I see three? I do, I see three. <laughs> Look at that. An acorn in Magla. And this tree, we got it from an Arab businessman who has great care for trees. Very clever guy, because a lot of trees come to grief when they build roads and other structures and cities expand. And so he has He's the point of reference and he finds out about the trees and he goes and salvages them and he keeps them. And when people need a nice tree like we did for our property, all those palm trees and olive trees have been supplied by him. And if a tree fails, he replaces it. That's on him. He does charge quite a penny. But trees are beautiful, especially in a climb like this. And to have these old trees in an old archaeological site is something very special. It gives it a real good feeling of the antiquity. And also the olive tree is so important for us, uh, for all the people who live here and for for our story and for the oil for the anointing for the messiah for that's the, where the word christian comes from from the oil of the olive tree the oil for the anointing so what should we do now how would you like me to do maybe we walk around a couple of places we don't go and see every day i usually don't go down here because they, there's some one of our guests here uh, having a morning walk. So we can go down here because if I went down here normally I'd miss the sunrise. But here we have the ritual beds. I don't think I've shown them for a while in the live stream. And So our big topic today, the big key word is wisdom in our readings. And wisdom primarily in the Bible is what the rulers need, you know, the famous wisdom of Solomon, to govern wisely. But then it could come down to decisions we make about ordering our lives. And we could be very unwise. One of the fascinating things about this site is if you drop down here, I go to down, go down with you. And you look at the level of the ground and you see the archaeology was at the surface level for 2000 years. Although this part of the site might be into the second and maybe even touch of the third century, according to some of the finds. So, I won't explain all this now here because we want to go on to the theme of the wisdom. You see this dry down here, we need 
rain falling in Galilee for the rain, the underground water table to rise for us to supply our, our ritual baths with water. So, what, wisdom. And there's a beautiful thought about it for the one who seeks it, wisdom shows up at the door. It's like, we need to seek for it, but it's also a gift. And that's very beautiful. Wisdom is a gift. But it's a gift for one who wants to be wise, because you want to be foolish. Let's say people are driving along, it's a bad habit some people have here, and they toss, a, uh, there's a car going along over there. I'm holding the umbrella, so I'm a bit restricted in my movements, although I don't need it anymore. It's not going to rain now. I'll fold up my umbrella. Just give me a second here. Look, at this is the path we took to build to uh, dug out to carry the water. And it used to be filled with water. But the water table changed, so. Guys, I need to put this down for a second. Just hold your horses. I need to tie up my umbrella. Just bear with me. And then it'll be easier for me to carry. And my hands will be a little freer to help you with the live stream. I imagine if you tuned in, you want to see the live stream. And we need to make that as nice as an experience as possible. Good. So now I got that umbrella off my hands. And we can continue our little morning rainy stroll. So the lines are beautiful, you know, uh, how the wisdom is looking for us. It's not just we're looking for the wisdom. Wisdom is looking for us. Wisdom wants us. And that's an interesting thing because we would think of wisdom and something in like a category of knowledge or understanding, uh, good counsel, good uh, decision making, wise person, foolish person. And we think of it as an abstract uh, idea, but in the Bible, the wisdom becomes personalized. It has a very big history. And that's also very interesting. So let's look at that for a second in the first reading. And it says, whoever watches for her at dawn. So we're up pretty early, guys. We're looking for words of wisdom from the scriptures. Watches for her at dawn, that means that we start the day looking to be wise, looking to, to live our lives with wisdom. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. So he just goes out of the house, but he wants to be wise, and it is gifted to him. Isn't that amazing? I find that fantastic. Let's take another look at our acorns here. of them. There are probably more, but I don't see any more. And they're the first reported air acorns from our oak tree here. Oh, I know what I wanted to do back up there. Now. I wanted to go up to see the how the carrot tree is doing. Let's go back there because the sun isn't promising us an appearance this morning. It's like the queen when when the people show up to see the queen and she doesn't show up. She didn't come out in her balcony window. So the king isn't coming out to wave this morning. Wisdom is the perfection of prudence. That's a very beautiful thought. And whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. So if we're looking out for the gift of wisdom, 
we shall become free from care we shall we'll, we won't be worried that's a very interesting thing also very connected to our faith that wisdom living wisely leads to great serenity and foolish people are very concerned about the changing circumstances very troubled and especially for people of faith because if we know that God created us with eternal love for eternal life and we handle like that that leads to great serenity even in the front of things like cancers and even great troubles wars are horrible but the worst thing we could do would be react unwisely Serenity, serenity in every circumstance of life. This is how the visitors interlooked every morning at this time of the day, but then during the day it was filled with activity. Now it's just got a couple of cleaning cloths hanging there. Some leaves on the ground. So I brought you here to show you the carob tree to see how it's doing. And we planted those three olive trees. You remember that, I shared that with you a few years ago and they're doing very well. You can see, have nice heads of hair. And here we have the carob tree. And that's also doing well, thanks be to God. There it is. But this olive tree looks like it has trouble. I'm not sure it was there before us, but maybe it's just part of it. The other part has still got green leaves. Well, here we saw the progress with these trees. So wisdom makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her. So there we have the personalization of wisdom. So we had the wisdom of Solomon, obviously well known in a thousand years earlier, or seven or eight hundred years earlier. And now we have the book of wisdom, which is written in the middle of the first century before Jesus. So that's uh, one of the latest writings. It takes time to become wise. We have to go through experiences of life. Wisdom is learned. But also here we see that wisdom is personalized. And actually that's a very big connection. Then 130 years later in John's gospel, we see that wisdom is the word incarnate. So wisdom is a person. And if you want something really hard, I'll talk more about this at mass. Uh, wisdom is in Paul's writings, Christ crucified. Wisdom for those who believe and a horror for those who don't believe. Absolutely repugnant for those who don't believe. exists now Here you see that the southern wing isn't even built, even the base of it. And the 
northern wing is still under construction. 2016. And Father Juan, who put so much into this, a lot of his life. So, then we have the ten virgins. I did a look at the synagogue here. The ten virgins, the five foolish and the five wise virgins. To know what life is about, that life isn't exhausted in the present moment of delight. Life has a purpose that goes way beyond this life. St. Teresa of Avila had a famous saying, the one who works for their salvation, who uh, puts into place what's needed for eternal life, is wise. And the one who doesn't, doesn't know very much. That this life is preparation. We see a very big concern in the first believers around the year 50 in Thessalonica. And Paul is writing to them today in the second reading. And he says, don't be worried. God's big picture has everything under control. Those who have died because they were expecting Jesus to return in their lifetime, they're in God's hands. And they don't have any disadvantage over us who should meet him when he comes for the living and the dead. But now we have 2,000 years of history. So at that moment, it was completely unprocessed and they expected Jesus to come in their lifetime. And so we Christians are called to live in two tensions. One, expecting and waiting for Christ to come. And number two, to be serving Christ who is here in every poor person, in every hungry and thirsty person, in every needy person. Sometimes some people focus just on the things here and now and they forget about the big vision of eternal life. And there are some other people that are so tensed up about if Jesus is coming tomorrow or the week after or the next week or next month, or next year because we have all these signs of end times and they might neglect to be kind and to be helpful to dry a tear of a crying child or a lonely person a hurt person wisdom is able to bring all that together the wise person has the things in perspective has deep serenity because of trust in god faith in god and a commitment to love each other People, God bless you, let you be the sunrise today. See you later, alligators. God bless you.